All right, guys, it's time to do a tier list again. And if you're watching this on Twitch, obviously this is going on YouTube, so I'm doing a cheesy intro. I apologize, but that's just what it is. Season of Discovery Phase 3 has been out for a week, kind of, not even, literally, tomorrow, you know, today, today. It's been out for a week, but we are on our second reset, and a lot of people already have multiple characters that they've raided on at least twice. And the raid has been nerfed multiple times. So now we have a good estimation of what's going to perform well, even though people might not have all of their gear yet, obviously. We do know how things are kind of shaping up, and you could definitely see how things are going to go. So I'm going to rate things in the raid, and I think you should actually watch each individual class because there's some classes that I'm going to give more stat weights to. Maybe I should do like a pure DPS because Shadow Priest is like the highest value DPS class. As a single DPS class, the highest value DPS class. Cross Mage, get wrecked. All right, perfect. Let's start with the classes that are by far outperforming every other class. The class that's going to be the absolute winner, Giga Chad, king of this phase. The class that will dumpster everyone in the raid very soon. Because I've already told you guys on stream that this is a melee meta, and that's just what it is. It is a melee meta. One more time, this is a melee phase. Last phase, the only way they could nerf melee was by giving them 56% physical damage reduction. That's crazy. Obviously, you got that down with debuffs if you had your raid group doing debuffs, but that's crazy. The class that is going to dumpster everyone this phase is warrior warrior is already this is the second reset and this player doesn't even have diamond flask which literally is 150 attack power the entirety of this fight duration instead he's using 18 attack power this is the rank one it's hiding behind my face just so you can like look at that what what indeed okay <laughs> this dude is doing 2.6k dps already it's a short fight and as fights get shorter, warriors get stronger because the duration of the fight where their death wish is up is longer and also recklessness. So warriors will do the most on pretty much every boss because of recklessness. This is a 30 minute CD though, which means throughout the whole entirety of the raid, melee hunters and rogues can like beat the warrior unless you're parsing and gonna wait for recklessness or use recklessness on a different fight every week, which is what people will do, by the way. People will use rec on a different fight every week to get the best parse. I promise you they will do that. And some raids will literally wait for recklessness every time. Uh, look at this. This is the rank two of this fight. Atos, look at this. He is gonna do, I'm telling you right now, I think he did 2,300 DPS. I'm gonna say it right now. He is going to do 3,000 DPS next phase, maybe. maybe. If he has good RNG. All right, first of all, look at his RNG. Crit, 70%. Uh, crit for melee, 63%. Crit for execute, 100% on three executes. Obviously, that's during wreck. Crit for slam, one slam, 100%. Crit chance was great. Miss chance, get wrecked, actually. Get wrecked, okay? But here's the issue. Here's, here's where he's going to do way more damage. Recklessness was only up 32% of the fight. He lost. He literally lost seven seconds of recklessness the recklessness could have been up for this amount of the fight and with the fight getting shorter it could be up for almost 100 percent. also mighty rage only up 17 percent. they anticipated this kill to be 48 seconds long it was 28 seconds long so that's going to be getting even higher they also lost where's death wish he, they also lost um i'm just gonna look at debuffs then there we go death wish he also lost 13 seconds of death wish so Warrior will absolutely dumpster most fights. There's a couple fights that Warriors will be competitive, like someone will fight Warriors on, but like Warriors are already doing 3,200 DPS on, on Morphaz and Hazas. This will hit 4,000 by the end of the phase. 4,000 DPS on one of the fights. Obviously the boss has a damage modifier, but the Chad S tier spec of this phase is Warrior. That is... Because because uh, you could also technically be a tank warrior. Let's look at Avatar of the Car really fast. Uh, oh, oh, look at that. Hunters on top. Get owned, warriors. Wow, does it feel bad to be deleted? Okay, because uh, Gladiator Stance Warrior can also be right there, right? This is 1,900 DPS almost on 
on Jamal on Nogon as a Glad Stance Warrior. So, Warriors, uh, King. Next, what class is following behind Warriors? This is where it gets a little bit tricky, but I would make the argument that it is Melee Hunter. I think on overall throughout the raid, and most consistent for everyone, you're going to see Melee Hunter going to be right here. Um, and the, the top four classes are all going to be really close. Warrior is going to be the, the biggest Chad. And then and then it's going to be like the the other the next three are going to be like really close to each other. But I think towards the end of the phase, these next two are going to scale up because right now it's kind of like Enhanced Shaman can be in the mix here, but like not really. But yes, really, but also, okay. So Melee Hunter. Melee Hunter, the interesting thing about Melee Hunter, to make it in the S tier, you have to have another hunter in your group that is a ranged hunter that is bringing true shot aura because the true shot aura buff gives you 300 ranged attack power which is what your pet scales on is your ranged attack power so it double dips on melee hunter melee hunter absolutely amazing but you you lose so much damage like 240 dps or something ridiculous for not having a second hunter in your group that is the ranged hunter it is ungodly how strong having True Shot Aura is for the melee hunter. It's kind of like that for every class, but, you know, these classes love raid buffs. Shafter, thank you so much, dog. I love you. Next up, from melee hunter, we move down to, finally, I'm giving it to them because of their utility. Rogues, we're back, baby! Yellows are back. Okay, if you look at the entirety of the raid, you will see yellows peeking up. Okay, you're going to have to fight against shamans. Yellow, okay, uh, green, blue, and yellow all are going to be fighting against each other. If you look at all bosses, because this is where you're going to see a lot of, like, all bosses, you're going to see a lot of a mixture of things. That's all star points. That, that's, let's just go to, let's go back, let's go big. And let's go here. You're going to see warriors on top, but you're going to see hunters here. You're going to see shamans here, and you're going to see rogues here. If I scroll down, you're also going to see feral druids. So feral druids, don't worry. You're going to, you're going to, so don't worry, feral druids. You're going to, you're going to be here. Okay. Um, here's the only thing for feral druid is you have to make the choice between your own single target DPS or buffing your entire raid, uh, with 15% crit for the party. It's an easy choice. Unfortunately, Blizzard made it again where we have to choose between our own personal enjoyment and uh, making the other stronger classes stronger. Kind of lame. That's how it is. Okay. Regardless, Assassination Rogue, Rogue and Enhanced Shaman are basically interchangeable. Currently, right now, technically, Shaman stronger. And then Rogue, I think, will win out in this phase above Shaman. Either way, in a good raid or either way in your average raid. Like, like most people will see in their raids a good Rogue dumpstering everyone. In your average raid, if you're in an average raid, this would look like Assassination Rogue number one, Melee, rogue num melee Hunter number two, Enhanced Shaman number three, Fury or Arms or whatever DPS Warrior number 17, right? Um, because... That's just how your average Fury or, or Arms Warrior just happens to play for the most time, right? Um, okay, just have Feral spread their bleeds. You don't even get to use your second bleed, and your your main bleed isn't even very good. Uh, Feral Druid, unfortunately, also has two main abilities that quite literally are basically useless, so it's unfortunate. Enhanced Shamans and Rogues. Rogues have incredible single target DPS as well as Rogue tier set this phase is like crazy. Can I... Rogues tier set... Does anyone know what it's called? Let me just move over like this. Give me a face cam. Give you this cam. I don't want to show uh, raid chat or guild chat. So that's why I didn't want to show that to you guys. We go to Temple of Atal Jakar. Temple of Atal Jakar. And let's go Rogue. Axe and Sinister Strike cause the target to take seven more damage from all sources. And Mutilate counts as a backstab, and Saber Slash counts as a Sinister Strike. On top of that, Rogues also can bring improved exposed armor for 200 more armor reduction. Meaning, not only is the Rogue just innately without using improved exposed armor, having everyone in your entire raid do more damage, they also do incredible single target DPS huge missed opportunity couldn't look this high uh yeah you're right big true huge okay so rogues uh absolutely bussin 
this phase, yellow's kind of finally back. But as we all know, shamans are the undisputed uh, broken class of all time. It's just, here's a lightning shield that you can have as a shaman tank that will do 500 damage per second uh, on certain bosses or certain encounters. It's 250 damage every second or other second for like every mob that you have. Yeah, shamans are... Um, are having a good time cool but this is uh, let's look in, we're looking at single target dps or i guess sure throughout the whole raid so these are the classes on top this is the top if we're looking at a tier list then you have your cutie pharaoh druid then don't worry about it we've got the cutie pharaoh druids you're here but you're kind of support individual fights pharaoh druids can do insane damage i can't do a pvp tier list uh i don't have expert knowledge in pvp personally to be brutally honest it's like i've talked about this so often but like i also can't do like a really in-depth healer tier list because like what do I, like i understand it but like i'm not like in the weeds super deep but um for damage uh, yes i am there's gonna be some youtube comments that say i have no idea what i'm talking about but that's okay feral druid dps very very solid in some of your raids you can be number one dps on some fights feral druids can be number one dps if you look at like even in al's raid i mean i'm assuming oh, we had a tank if he had if we had like siansu or something um let's go to a tall arion right and let's go to right here like a feral druid can do this is 2000 dps from the feral druid you can't see it because my face is covering it so i get it whatever boom 1900 dps from the feral druid feral druids can do phenomenal dps look at how fun this rotation is but whatever at least it's like the exact same thing as hunter where your pet is doing all of your damage and you're hoping that you can get good rng to get a raptor strike out either way it's the, it's the phase of the physical dps so s tier all of these classes for sure double s tier would just be warrior and i would move everything down for value highest value as a single class brought to the raid is shadow priest their single target dps is absolutely but the highest value brought for one player is this somebody's gonna take a screenshot of this and be like i have no idea what i'm talking about but the shadow priests do like 75% of the damage of a good player, right? Like Shadow Priest is probably going to be able to cap out at like 1400 DPS or something, right? Cool. While well, Warriors can cap out at like 3000 DPS. But Shadow Priests have ridiculous AoE. So for the whole raid, it's ridiculous AoE. They've got debuffs that they add to the raid that make it so that eight different globals don't need to be used. Five for Sunder, one for Demo Shout, one for Thunderclap, one for uh, the other Curse, whatever, you know? um curse of elements or weakness or whatever it ends up happening from their helm and uh they get shadow vulnerability that they add and they also heal they're like literally another healer you don't use homunculi for armor anymore you use rogue improved exposed armor lexian you are right you're griefing your rogue semi not really but sure yeah but it is that is what the best runs and the parses will do your average rogue is not pressing exposed armor. I'm just going to be honest with you. Your average rogue, your average fury warriors never pressed sunder in their life, especially after homunculi came out. They don't even track it anymore. In your good raid, you are correct. But again, you would homunculi first because you need to get five combo points to get your exposed armor up. Anyways, highest value for one class is Shadow Priest. I don't think it's possible to debate that. If you do debate that, I don't think you're comprehending what's going on in, in the raid fully. But everything else we're raiding on basically single target DPS for the most part, except for Shadow Priest. We're giving it to him. Cool. How would you make Shadow Priest DPS A tier or even B tier? Yeah, without breaking their PvP aspect, you can't. You literally can't tune it to increase their DPS and they already bring the highest utility. I don't know if any Shadow Priests are out there like complaining about their DPS because of how valuable they are and how they can literally put two dots on anyone in PvP and those people die. There's nothing you can do unless you have Ice Block. Red Paladin, pretty good, but not in the same realm as all of these guys. Red Paladin. There's some fights where Rhett can like kind of pop off. You can do like 1400k DPS. I'm, let's take a gander, eh? All right. Um, number one DPS on this fight is 2.6k from Warrior. Number one DPS from Rhett Paladin is 14,000 damage. Goodbye. Let's look at a longer fight. This, this fight is 
this fight so there's some fights where rets can do really well a tall eye defender is doing almost a thousand dps is phenomenal for this fight because one this fight is not good for warriors there's there's ramp up time it's good for a class that can do a lot of burst damage really fast like a enhanced shaman rogues do really well in this fight uh, melee warrior melee hunters sorry uh melee warriors do really well in this fight so if we were to look at this fight and and look at all classes yeah uh just like i said enhanced shaman melee hunter and rogue and some warriors are here but it's not the easiest but even then you finally have uh, an enhanced uh, but let's look at another fight. Let's look at Morphaz and Hazaz. Okay, Warriors are doing 3,200 damage, and um, Rep Paladin is doing 2,300. Okay, 800 DPS less than the Warrior. That's fine. Let's look at Jamalan and Ogon. This is the fight. Aren't these undead? So Rep Paladins can crit forever. 1,500 DPS. There we go. Okay, 1,500 DPS. All classes. Only 300, almost 400 below. Like 200-ish below uh, Enhanced Shamans. Red Paladins are okay. How are Shamans looking? They're literally... They are unironically... The, the imbalance between Horde and Alliance has never been this this powerful. I'm not mad about it. Um, I'm not mad about it. So Red Paladins, interesting. They could be... I think they're in a, the B tier. Because I think the B tier is a large tier. And this is where you start inviting a lot more people. I think all of these classes stand above everyone else. And the B tier is kind of where like a lot of other people will sit. Balanced Druids, C tier, get wrecked. I'm sorry. It's just kind of unfortunate. The Balanced Druids didn't really get much love right now. You can look at it. Uh, the number one DPS, Balanced Druids doing 893 DPS on Jamal Om and Okan. Okay, Balanced Druids have now gone down to D tier, um, hanging out with Frost Mages. Sorry about it. You get wrecked, Balanced Druids. Apparently, Blizzard hates you. Uh, you were too strong last phase, at the beginning of the phase, in PvP. And the biggest issue you could do as a class is be too strong at the beginning of a phase. Especially if it's in PvP, because if you can one-shot people, they will cry on Reddit, and Blizzard will see that, and they will nerf you to Oblivion. Goodbye. Except for Shamans, for some reason. Except for Shamans. For some reason, they decided Shamans can have it all. For some crazy reason, Blizzard has decided shamans can literally have it all. Um, but balanced druids need some love. I remember at the beginning of last phase, I made a tier list and I said shamans need some love because right now they're a fun class that does not bring enough. And then two weeks later, Blizzard saw that video and decided to buff them by 20 to 30 percent damage. And then a week later, buff them by another 20 percent attack power. And it was like, okay. And then they decided this phase to give them a lightning shield rune that just is a literal god rune. Like, okay. But whatever. I digress. I digress. Ellie Shaman. Interestingly enough, Ellie Shaman can do really well. And there's some melee Ellie Shaman builds. I don't know if I still have uh, the VOD. Melee Ellie Shaman things that they can touch on. Ellie Shaman has the opportunity to do a lot of damage. Um, but it also has the opportunity to do very little damage. Ellie Shaman, I'm going to put you, you're actually below Rhett. You're in the C tier. It has the opportunity to have a good job but or a good time, but you're just not, not in the same world as Rhett, which is also not like insane, right? And you're nowhere near the world of these guys. You're nowhere near the world of, of melee DPS, okay? Marksman Hunter, what do we think, guys? Survival Hunter, you're down here in the C tier or D tier. Marksman Hunter. Technically, sure, you can give Survival Hunter like B tier, but like there's no reason playing Survival Hunter over BM Hunter, right? Marksman Hunter, I, I think it, it can be, it's A tier. True Shot Aura is S tier. Marksman Hunter itself is A tier. True Shot Aura, True Shot Aura is so criggity criggity cracked, okay? Blizzard decided to buff True Shot Aura just to allow for Hunters to be viable for ranged and realistically what it was what they did they were like oh hey by the way guys ranged has a fun rotation now but you also we gave you steady shot but also made that a completely useless ability you never get to use but also hey um to make you viable you're a support spec have fun glad stance is here also these are all interchangeable glad stance is here also i mean sure let's give glad stance right there if you have fun pressing your one button one button marksman rotation is really fun almost in my personal opinion but i i do like that everybody likes it um in my personal opinion it's really fun almost it's 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 this close to being great 
The issue is there are some downtimes in your globals and it's not like you're waiting on like pooling something. You're just waiting on an ability to press. That is the worst thing that you can do. And that's lame. It's like a half, half a global. Whenever you have a half a global, but I, uh, I like it a lot. So Marksman Hunter, also it's a buff spec. It's great. Marksman Hunter got a lot of, a lot of love this phase. So I'm glad it, it got love. Okay. Now let's look at Arcane Mage. Arcane Mage DPS goes into the dumpster fire. Um, fire Mage. Fire Mage. Fire Mage. How do you guys feel about Fire Mage? Fire Mage has the potential to be ungodly. No, not ungodly. It has the potential to sort of compete with melee. Um, you only have mana issues if you're playing on Alliance. Horde actually don't even understand what, what mana issues are. Shamans, unironically, make it so that mana issues are not even a thing in the game. It's If you play on Horde, it's legitimately not a thing. You're like, oh, what is mana? I didn't even... We gained back 7,000 mana on that fight, right? Um, so here's the thing, guys. Uh, Fire Mage, uh, you kind of only get... You press one button and you bind it to your scroll wheel and then you fall asleep and you go... And you just go scrolling and you're like... Ah, ah. I min-maxed everything I could do right there. That is a 99. Have fun, Fire Mage. You're going right there into the B tier, you could, on some fights, you can make it to the A, you can make it to the A, okay, you can make it to the A, if, let, let's be realistic, okay, you can make it to the A tier, if we look at mage top damage, 1400 DPS on this fight, sure, it's just way too short of a fight for you to actually get utility, Hazas and Morphaz, it doesn't count, because the damage modifier on your crit, the damage modifier of 200% gets applied, I think, before your crit, so it doesn't count, you, you get to juice up that fight, but sure, let's look at other fights. Top damage, 1,100. You actually, your Dream Siphon Weather, 1,000 damage. All right, you went down to B tier. For now, Fire Mage is B tier. Get wrecked, owned. Um, okay. Mage will be top again. With world buffs, we reach 45% crit. We're on the second reset. Maybe you could fight here, but I mean, Survival Hunter could actually beat you. So, no, you're. Because Dan, Dan, I just took you to the Demon Gnomer. Dude, you're going into your B tier and you're going to enjoy it. You're going top of B tier. Enjoy it. There you go. Enjoy. Does A we count for anything? Uh, not in this current, what I'm talking about, except for, for Shadow Priest. If we were to look at, um, can you bring up Workup Vlog's ranking list? Do they have it up yet? Yeah. Oh, are you going to, are you going to, uh, all right. Do you want me to bring up uh, the 95th percentile where it's going to say hunters are the best class in the game? Let's go to 95th percentile where it says hunters and shamans beat everyone and rogue. Hunters, rogues, then shamans. That's what 95th percentile is going to say. Let's, let's, let's. Oh, look. Hunter, rogue, shaman. Um, so the thing is, warriors will be able to be number one on every fight. But throughout a raid, if you're not able to use your CDs on every fight, these three classes should be able to beat you. These three classes should be able to beat you. Obviously, if we were to go and look right now, the number one player in the world is obviously Al Alando. But this guy um, cheats by being too good. He doesn't even have Diamond Flask. He's going to do so much more damage. I hope he got his gear. This He always, for some reason, gets the best weapon first raid. So, um, But it's not a fair estimation of like saying like how warriors will do because they have a 30 minute CD that's just ungodly, right? So it's hard to say. So I want you to understand throughout an entire raid, you're gonna see melee hunters do really well, enhanced shamans do really well, and rogues do really well, and the, the best, the best warriors. But individual fights, you'll just have like a, a warrior every week changing what fights he's using rec on and literally deleting everyone. Um, by doing 3000 DPS, right? Okay, right. Again, let's here's 2600 DPS from Warriors. Um, and here's uh 3200 DPS from Warriors. And this fight, a good fight for melee hunters. So I think it's gonna be oh shoddy. Fuck that, dude. Look how many slots I got knocked down. Look how many slots I got knocked down. What a fucking noob. You know why I'm down here number 10 on this fight? You guys want to know why? This is a tangent in the middle of, I'm bringing this up, in the middle of our, in the middle of the tier list. 82% Curse of Rec uptime. 82% Curse of Rec uptime. 82% Curse of Rec uptime. I was, yes, I was really mad in this raid because that's, it's unbelievable. I, I stopped saying it out loud because I was annoying people. 
I was like, I'm going to annoy my raid. I, how can you possibly not use Curse of Rec first global? And also, um, unfortunately, and it's not the fault of the priest, we only had 51% uptime of, of, uh, homunculus it's this again not the fault of the priest though because the boss does aoe damage onto the homunkies he actually does hit the homunkies so they do need to be healed but once the homunkies went down the sunders weren't great so i easily lost i don't know 150 dps on this fight it would have been rank one at the time but i'd probably be rank three right now so whatever get over it sarth your butt hurt doesn't matter we it was a split raid most people are on like fresh alts anyways okay next combat rogue um combat rogue is in this interesting position where um you i'm not even rating it just bring an assassination rogue why are you playing combat rogue it's cool but like it said just play assassination that's it um destro warlock I don't want to rate Combat Rogue D tier. It's just it's just like a not brought. Sure, it's with a Frost Mage. Have fun. Just play. You're, you're, every Rogue knows that they're not playing Combat Rogue. It's just like Mutilate is too good. Okay. Warlocks. Warlocks, guys. This is the last DPS class. Warlocks. Curse of Wreck makes them S tier. Here's the thing. If you don't press Curse of Wreck as your first global, then go home. Stop playing Warlock and not pressing Curse of Wreck. If you're out here pressing Curse of Elements in your group to buff your, your casters 50 DPS each, leave. This isn't the phase. You could have done that last phase before people got the Fist Weapon. And the whole reason why the Fist Weapon last phase was designed into the game was purely because we couldn't have both of the Warlock Curses and it allowed the Warlock that wasn't casting a curse to cast Curse of Wreck. Regardless, in any pug you were in, every Warlock cast Curse of Agony. If you see a Warlock cast Curse of Agony instead of one of the debuff curses, politely ask them to press a different buttons because they are unironically losing damage. They will do less damage by using this ability, it's 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 a such a thing in World of Warcraft Classic that people don't understand. In WoW Classic, debuffs will increase your damage, even though that ability you're using is technically not an ability that does damage. Uh, you are losing damage because the boss dies so much slower, and Curse of Agony is cheeks. Every raid should have two warlocks, though. Your average, yeah, your average group should have probably two warlocks, and and one of them needs a curse wreck. It's way more important, but realistically, your average group kind of has two warlocks. But yeah, right. Shadow priests have the curse of the elements. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Does every group have two warlocks? I don't know. Warlocks are kind of like not that insane right now. They were amazing last phase, but Blizzard decided to take away their one rune that gave them forty percent damage, which applied before all of their crit modifiers. So uh, here we got on Avatar of Hakar, a warlock doing nine hundred and sixty-one DPS, where the rank one DPS is uh, seven hundred DPS higher than this. Okay, let's see. Uh, they have a crit modifier, right? So Morphaz and Hazaz should be their best fight. Eighteen hundred DPS. That is unironically. 1400 dps lower than warriors warriors are at 3200 and the number one warlock that has a crit modifier on a fight that is all about crits is doing 1800 dps yes if you've ever raided with me you know that my only my biggest pet peeve in class world of warcraft is just not putting up buffs and debuffs because it's unironically just griefing your raid for the sake of you not wanting to press your most important button but that's classic World of Warcraft. It's very backwards in the way that you would assume a game works, whereas like you pressing a button that doesn't do damage makes you do more damage. It's backwards, right? But it's it's literally what it is. Uh, yeah, no, deep wounds. Look at the, okay. So this is really fast. I am gonna show you the deep wounds damage on on, uh, on Hazas and, and Mazas. All right, I'm gonna show you the deep wounds damage on Hazas and Bazas, on Blazas and Gazas. I'm gonna do show you the deep wounds damage on Hazas and Blazas. And Gazas and Blah. Alright. And Glaga and Blah. The deep wounds damage on Gligli Glaga. But wait, how much did it do? The average hit on Glaga was hitting for 6,100 in the Dream Realm. The average hit. But what was the most? But what huh, was the, the most? Let's go to this here uh, events list and let's look at uh, deep wounds. 9,100 damage from one tick of deep wounds. 